Okay guys, we got our old brake pads out and uh, the hardware off. These are the new brake pads here. If you notice, I put inner and outer on them. And the reason why I did that is so when I take those off, if I forget what pad goes on what side and they have uneven wear, by putting inner and outer on them, I can tell which pad goes on the inside and the outside. That way I can see if I need to shim out my caliper at all to see if the wear is uneven. Now here is the old ones. As you see, they're barely used. That See, when, when I take these off and I put them down, I lose track of which one went where. So, this one here, I think this side here is a little lower. You know, now here is... See, I, I, and these probably have about 500 miles on them, so they're, these are still good. Yeah, but I'm going to save these for a rainy day. Then uh, this is my little tool here for pressing the pistons back in. You know, what I do is I shove that inside the caliper, and uh, the piston need, need to press in probably maybe like, maybe, maybe one or two millimeters. our pin where it goes in nice and easy okay guys that's what that should look like see I have the cotter pin and after you get that uh, that little spring clip in there that's how that should look like the spring clip should be on top of your uh, the metal part of your pads. Some of you are probably wondering how I get my uh, my master my my foot brake master cylinder bolts out. Actually, what I do, guys, is this is an Allen head key from my um, for here. Let me show you from my little multi allen head tool and um, what I do is I take this off I, I take the screw out, I take this out and this fits down, make sure it's inside your screw now with a little screwdriver I go like that and I also use a socket too I t the socket takes it out the rest of the way I use a socket to put it back in but I use this to tighten it it's either that or you're going to take your foot brake off to get to it. So this is this is a lot easier. So, okay. So I got brand new pads on the back of the big dog. I don't think I got to re-bleed the rear brakes. They feel pretty good. I torqued down the, uh, the rear caliper. That's torqued down. Uh, you, you guys seen in the past video, I replaced that... Uh, that uh, brake light switch that's on the caliper and um, yeah and uh, I put there there's a shim for each bolt on the count on the caliper 
when I when I originally changed my brakes the first time, I don't remember if there was more than one shim on one of the bolt on one of the bolt locations that fastens a caliper to the uh, the caliper assembly. I, I don't remember if there was more than one shim. You know, there, there's a shim for each fastener, but I don't remember if there was two shims on one fastener, if plus the plus the other one on the other fastener. I, I just don't remember. I mean, it looks like it's wearing pretty good. That's the whole purpose of me putting that inner and outer on the pads. That way, when I take this off, maybe this time next year, if there's any abnormal wear like on the corners of the pads I'll know what needs shimmed now. I'll, I'll know what side of the caliper is going to need going to need one of those shims and I'll tell you something about those shims they're not cheap. Those goddamn shims are expensive. For six shims they're like $29 and all they are they're they're just thin washers that's all they are and they're tw like 20 to 29 bucks. So you know that's that's pretty goddamn expensive, you know. And and none of us bikers are rich, so that's what we try to you know we try to watch our money. If the pads wear unevenly, then but the only thing you'll have better braking power if the pads are contacting one hundred percent of their surface against that rotor. That's that's the thing. It's not a matter of spending the twenty nine dollars. It's a matter of having real good braking power. Because I use I use both brakes at the same time. That's how I train myself. And when I come to a stop, I apply the back and the front brake. And then as I'm stopping, I take my foot off the front brake to put my foot down while I'm still holding the, the, uh, the front brake. That's how I do it. So, in a lot, a lot of new bikers, they don't know how to stop a motorcycle. It, you know, it's just common sense. You stop a motorcycle with a front and rear brake, and before you come to a complete stop, you take your foot off of the foot brake, but you keep your hand on the front brake handle, on the front brake lever, and uh, you know you put your foot down, put make sure both feet are down, but or both legs are down, I should say. And uh, you, you come to a complete stop with your front brake. That's how I do it. So uh, I'm going to take a look at my front brakes. Now, I think they're okay. I, I mean, if the back brake was okay, the front ones are okay. But I'm going to take a look at them anyway with you guys. Oh, yeah, guys. We're cool, man. Look. They're brand new, man. They're cool in the gang. The clip's on. Everything's cool. As you see, there's a lot of maintenance on a motorcycle. A motorcycle is more safety conscious maintenance than a car is, than a, a vehicle, a four-wheel four vehicle. Because, you know, your life rides on this. The safety of your life rides on these two wheels. So that's why everything has to be in good operating condition. You have to have good tires or new tires, new brakes or good brakes, all your fluids, your horn, etc., your lights. Just the whole motorcycle has to be in good or great or new operating condition. That's why I'm constantly checking this. These take up a lot of time and I'll tell you the honest or truth, it's hurting me. It's taking the older I get, the harder it's getting for me to put time into this. And it's just, uh, see that's one thing about the Hayabusa. The Hayabusa wasn't like this. You could just jump on it and take off. You know, I mean, I still eyeballed it, but it's not not as like it's not like a Harley Davidson was for me, or like this motorcycle here. 
the hey boo saw you can just literally put your helmet on your gloves jump on it and take off there is almost no maintenance on that whatsoever you didn't have to wait for it to warm up because it had O2 sensor on it you know um, the only thing about the Hayabusa guys it was it was uncomfortable for me I was way too big for it you know no matter what I did it my legs still hurt I still got leg cramps when I was on that you know because I lowered I bought lowered foot pegs my put my foot pegs were one inch and a half lowered and then I, I made I, I made a special seat for it you know I adjusted my my handlebars on and it was still very uncomfortable for me my hands constantly went numb on it because you know you're putting all your weight on your on your wrist and your hands my hands always went numb they don't on this by the way I had a rat in my house first rat I've ever had since I lived here it was a Norway rat. I think it came up through my sewer. Because in my in my laundry room, I um, around the sewer pipe that goes into the concrete from my laundry tub, I just put expanding foam around it and it chewed all of that away. It made, there's, made like a nice little neat pile of expanding foam. I, I went in there one day, I'm looking, I'm saying, what the hell is that? Then I put a flashlight on it, and then that's when I realized that a rat must have come up through the sewer. So I concreted that, and then I forgot about the toilet I took off in my basement bathroom. I had a rag in there; it ate the rag to come up through that uh, to come up through where my toilet was. There's actually a lot of stories where people say they come up through the toilet, and you're sitting on a toilet, and a rat bites you in the ass. So before I put that toilet on, I'm going to buy, there's a device called a flapper that you put in your sewer, in your uh, toilet pipe first, in your toilet drain first. And uh, what it does is when you flush your toilet, the flapper goes down. When the water, <coughs> when the water is done going through, it comes back up. There is flappers like that you can put in your main sewer line. Which I'm not doing a drig my driveway, but if I was going to build the house, I would have that put in on my main sewer line. Knowing now what a rat can do. But anyway, it was a Norway rat. I caught him. I trapped him. I have like a metal squirrel, ca squirrel cage. Because we had a squirrel in the house once. And I, tra I trapped the rat and like a jackass. I let him out my driveway. What do you think he did? Came back in the house, and I gotta trap him again. This time, when I trap him, I'm taking him a couple miles away from here. But uh, it was probably about maybe, maybe that big. It was probably like double the size. I think I'm pretty sure it was a Norway rat. It was probably double the size of a large adult mouse. The sounds it was making was like like a screeching mouse noise and it smelled like almost like rotten garbage that's what he said that's what it smelled like but that's that's something you guys need to look into if you're having a problem like that take a look at your your, your sewer lines in your house and to make sure like where your lines going to concrete make sure they're concreted make sure you've got concrete around the pipe <coughs> and uh, you might want to look into a flapper for your toilets. So anyway, I'm all done here with the motorcycle except for shining it up. I might shine it up in the next coming weeks. But this is January 1st, 2022 right now. And uh, our cold weather is about to start. And the snow is about to start. So this isn't going to be going out of this garage probably for at least probably for at least three months probably for at least a good three months guys because January and then, this, and then we usually get a we usually get pounded with snow the second week of February and then it starts tapering off 
you know, by the time the uh, the third week of February comes, the, our snow is like on its way out. That's usually what happens here. I, I'm looking at houses too, by the way. I'm looking at homes in central Pennsylvania. I'm th I'd like to move to a small town like Johnstown or Natney Glow or like Willsboro, Stroudsburg. I, I want to move to one of those small towns here in Pennsylvania. Probably central Pennsylvania or maybe somewhere around Yorktown or Harrisburg. That's what I mean because we're going to be retiring within about seven, eight years and uh, I want to live in a nice simple house in a nice little town away from all this crazy shit and definitely away from the crazy people here in Allegheny County. That's first and foremost. So, Happy New Year. I hope your 2022 is healthy and prosperous for you guys.